Okay, welcome to another video. Today we're going to take a look at a distribution which is a little bit different to what we're used to checking out on this channel and this one's called Jing OS. So it claims to be the world's first iPad OS like Linux distribution. So what that means is it's mainly going to be built and designed around the use for touchscreen input devices. It's based on Ubuntu and unfortunately I don't have a touchscreen device for us to use for today's video. So I've tried to compromise a little bit and we are running it off of a laptop so we can at least check out the touchpad gestures that do work on Jing OS. Now unfortunately we can't actually get the installer to work and that is on a native install as well as a virtual machine so we're going to be checking out the features inside of a live environment. So here we are. So first things first this is the default kind of environment you are going to be greeted with so we have a home screen I'm not going to call it a desktop because it's supposed to be an iPad OS like distribution. And by default we have two, so you can notice there's little sort of page indicators here. We're on the first page, now there is a touchpad gesture with two fingers to swipe to go to the next one, but unfortunately, no matter how slow or how fast end to end I drag on my touchpad, it won't actually take us there, but what we can do is click and then just drag it over like so. So not the best, but this is all very alpha preview releases, so this should all get ironed out when it's actually got a final release, and at the moment, I think there's two devices which are kind of officially supported, which I think are a Surface Pro 6 and a Huawei MateBook 14. We're just checking it out on a generic laptop. So we have a little kind of dock at the bottom here with some pinned applications, which do a little icon zoom when you hover over it. And then all of your installed applications are going to be spread across your home screen, as you would expect from something trying to mirror the look and feel of iPad OS. Now on the top, we have a little shadow here, which is going to be a kind of panel kind of area and in the top left here is your clock and if we was to click and pull that down that will then show your notification center now as you can see we've got a few notifications here for discover and I've noticed there is quite a few KDE elements installed on here even your system settings now imagining you have a touchscreen device you would just pull that down by pulling it down with your finger from the left hand side of the screen now also with the notifications you would just swipe to dismiss them but as we are using a touchpad I've noticed that the two finger swipe doesn't do anything but we can click and then just pull them to dismiss them like so. So we can get rid of them, all of them and we should be good to go. Now to the top hand right of the screen we have another little pull down which again if you was using a touchscreen input you would just pull it down with your finger. And this is kind of like your control center which if you've used iOS or iPadOS you will be very much used to. So we have a little toggle here for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and then just below it we have some greyed out icons for flight mode, mobile data and night mode. So if you had a cellular device which had like a mobile data or a SIM card, you could sort of cut off all those connections by clicking the flight mode there as well as your mobile data. Now to the right of it we have a little audio playback sort of widget here. So it, I'm going to imagine playing audio would give you some album art preview. And we can pause, skip and previous to the next tracks, which is pretty cool from within your control center. Now down here we have the ringer, so let's give that a go. It's a volume slider. So I'm getting a bit of static there on this machine, but it is giving me a bit of a audio feedback that is changing. And then to the right of that, we have a slider for your brightness. Now I haven't actually tested this on the laptop, so let's see if the laptop screen actually dims when we use this. It does indeed, so that's actually dimming my laptop screen, so that's all working as well. And then now here we have some more grayed out icons, so we have auto rotate, obviously we haven't got a device which has an accelerometer in it, so moving it around won't actually change the aspect ratio from landscape or portrait on this device. We then have a, lo a location button and settings, a little volume button, and as well as this button here, which I found out is a screenshot tool, so if we click that, that will take a screenshot of your desktop or home screen and you know that it's worked if you pull down your notification shade it will then tell you that of course it has taken a notification plasma workspace like i said there's a lot of kde elements built into this distribution so again we're just going to drag that to dismiss that notification now we're going to pull this down once more like so i don't think tap to clicks enabled actually let me just try that with just a tap no, so we might need to go into the settings and enable tap to click in just a moment. So here we have a volume button, which if I remember, will open up the sort of volume settings in system settings for KDE. And here is where we're gonna use another gesture for the first time. So with a three finger swipe, we're gonna go up, and then that will show you or expose you your running applications. And now if we click on it again, we're now gonna try a different sort of way here. 
like so and then that's taken us to our home screen so again we're going to bring that back up and now there's a little x here so we could dismiss that program but we're not going to do that just yet and this little trash can icon will then dismiss all of your running applications which we will try in just a moment so we're now going to start checking out some of these applications so we have a photo here a photo application so it's going to open everything in kind of a full screen view and give you a little loading icon as it's loading that page so here is the screenshot that we have just taken. Let's have a look at that in the full screen view. And how do we go back? There we go. So when you move to the left hand side of the screen, it will then expose a little arrow and it will go forward and backwards to the next applications. And how do we just go back? I don't quite know. Escape. There we go. So pressing escape has now brought us back to that. So we have all photo and video. So there is a little video here, which is like an introductory video, but we'll check that out in just a moment as well. Now you might have noticed that when we've done a little two uh, three finger swipe it's then gone to the next running application so you can do that with multiple applications and you just keep going and it's not on a cycle so when you get to the last one it doesn't loop back it will just stay there and you can go from left to right to go to the next application so let's open a few more things and test it out with just more than one application now our default web browser is firefox i have noticed by default everything looks a bit big and blown out i'm going to imagine that's the scaling but that's all working as one would expect. Now we're gonna go into the all running applications view again and see how it looks with multiple applications. So it's quite a nice symmetrical view. So I'm gonna imagine if we open up another one, it would tile it like so, and it does actually look quite nice. Now what we're gonna do is test out closing one application with the X. So we're getting a bit of weird jitteriness here, but then bear in mind this is not nowhere near a final release. And now we're gonna press this trash can icon and then that will get rid of everything. Next up, we have a media player. So again, it's gonna give you a little loading icon and then it will open it up in the full screen view. And here is a little video here, so let's give that a go. There we go, so it's an introductory video. Let's just mute that. And there is your little sort of volume indicator that you've muted and volume up looks like that. So that doesn't look too great. And let's try it with the brightness keys on this laptop as well. There we go, so I think they're gonna to need to work on that to make it look a little bit nicer. But like you can see, a lot of it is kind of KDE-esque with sort of KDE elements baked into it. Next up, we have a calendar. Let's have a look at their calendar application. Again, so this is all going to be sort of built and designed to be mainly used around sort of touchscreen devices. And that's why things are going to be a bit bigger with nice spacing in between so you don't always hit the wrong number, etc. So let's say we're on 29. Let's double click that. So that does nothing. But we've got a plus button here. And here's where we can create new events with a title time and we can also do the alerts so that's pretty cool let's go back to our home screen and we have a calculator obviously no sort of touchscreen device is complete without a calculator so that should also work with your actual keys and of course we could use the mouse and do all of the stuff we've even got sin there and tan well there we go we then have a wps so wps appears to be the default office application as opposed to something like LibreOffice. Now I've not really used WPS too much so I can't really talk on how good it is but let's have a little look. So a lot of Chinese characters there that I have no chance understanding so let's just confirm that. Oh we have an agreement here for Kingsoft Office. I've also noticed so as you can see the cursor isn't a pointer it's like an iPad OS sort of circle but it's a bit hit and miss so it won't always actually get the element you're trying to click on and I have noticed that quite a lot. So it's just not hitting it at all at the moment. Okay, let's see if we can just tab into it. Oh, it's just disappeared entirely. Can we get that back up? Let's go back to, so it's closed it. I don't know what we did there, but that's closed WPS Office. Let's try and open that once more. There we go. So you'll notice on these all elements of these buttons here, you'll get a little blue shade when it's actually gonna interact with it, but it's kind of off axis. So if we go into the middle of the button, you'll notice that a click on there won't do anything and that blue shade isn't actually there. But if we move to the top left of that actual thing, a blue shade will appear and then we can actually interact with that button. So little things like that will need to be ironed out. So we've got some problems here, but we won't worry about that right now. So again, it's just not liking the uh, the button there. So we're not gonna update everything because of course we are running in a live environment. But here we go. So I guess we can just go to new document like so and type away as you would expect. Now, of course, if you're using a touchscreen device which has no keyboard, it does have an on-screen keyboard built in. So let's close this off for now. 
and then we have the voice memos I'm not too sure if this will work so let me just make sure we're not muted and let's try and actually get see if it can record off the built-in microphone on this laptop testing testing one two three so I can't see any peaks there so I don't think that's actually worked nope so it's not worked with the built-in microphone on this particular laptop but that's not to worry so that's voice memos we then have mpv media player for local media playback or video files and again it's going to open up by default on your full screen view we didn't have wps pdf clock which i should imagine will let you do things like alarms as well as your stopwatch and then just your timer so very nice let's keep moving so we have a few more applications from the WPS suite like presentation, spreadsheets and WPS writer. Now we're going to go onto the next page and see what we've got there. But again, it won't work with the two finger drag, which is quite annoying. So we're going to click the screen and then just bring it forward. I'd like to see that working just so I can see how smooth the animation is, because so far all of the other, an other animations are quite nice and fluid. And I don't notice too much stuttering there. So let's close all of these off now. Okay, so we have a Kirigami Gallery. We have the camera. Let's check out the uh, built-in camera application. So it is going to use the um, laptop's webcam. So it's got us rotated the wrong way, but there we go. Very nice. <laughs> Let's get out of that. And then we have Advanced Network Configuration, iBus Preferences, Input Method. So if we open that up, let's have a little look. So Input Method Configuration. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff missing at the moment. And... Do you want to, no, let's just leave that. We'll skip this for now. We don't want to mess around with that too much. But that's pretty cool. So it's still actually playing the um, preview on the camera there, even when you're in the multitasking view. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so we then have KDE Connect. So you could wirelessly sync your Android phone notifications and send text, etc., from your tablet or laptop device. And our default file manager is Dolphin. I'm not too sure how Dolphin how good dolphin is with a touchscreen i've never tried it but there we go and of course by default it is going to open up in the full screen view so let's close this one off now and next up we have the info center so let's open this up and see what we're running with so we are using the more up-to-date version of kde which is 5.20.2 which means things like k runner you can change the center position and in the system settings for kde which this uses you can do things like highlight changes now if we press Alt and Space, we should be able to open up KRunner, so much like you would find on your iPad if you were using something like, what is the application launcher Spotlight? That should behave in the same way. And of course, if we wanted to, we should be able to go straight into the settings here and then make it more center to give you more of that kind of iPad kind of vibe. Again, the buttons are just not where they should be. And now let's try that on this sort of screen here. Okay, so it's not open up on the home screen. Let's open up the, let's use the uh, gesture there, and now let's try and open it up there. No, so it seems that it doesn't want to open it up anywhere but the top screen, at least for the moment. Let's see if we can get it back now. No, so for some reason, it's just not working at all now that we've messed around with it. But if you don't want it to break, just leave it at the default for now until things are a bit more ironed out. So install system, I'll show you what happens when you try this. It just will not load anything. And I did try this on a virtual machine on a different computer as well as this laptop. And I made coffees in between, but it just was not going to load. So unfortunately, I can't show the installation process as much as I would like to. We then have KSysGuard, KWallet Manager, and then the Emoji Selector. Again, full screen application view, and you'll have a little loading screen of the icon there. So there we go. So to wrap things up, let's have a look at some of these applications down the bottom. So this is going to be your kind of dock sort of view here. So by default, we have our terminal. Let's have a look at what terminal we are. And let's do a uname A to see what kernel we are currently running. So we've got Linux Jingos, Jingos 5.4.0-65 generic. And of course, we are based on Ubuntu. Let's get out of that. And now let's see what this is. So this is a system settings button, but because we've already opened it, it's going to open it straight into the recent. So let's see if we can close that and do that again. So let's close all of these. And we're going to click this icon once more. And there we go. So as you can see, it is using the KDE system settings. And we can, of course, do the highlight changes. While we're in here, let's see what theming we are using. So by default, it doesn't have too many themes installed, just the sort of basic Breeze themes that you will find on most KDE distributions. So we've got Breeze Light, Breeze Dark, and Breeze Twilight. Let's see if we can change it to the dark and whether that works with all of the applications. 
Okay, I think we've crashed it. So what I'm gonna do is just pause the video here, reboot and carry on where we've left off. Okay, so we're back after the reboot and let's see if our K runner is back working as it should. There we go. So with Alt and Space, K runner is now back. I'm not sure what they're gonna do about K runner in the final release and whether they're gonna have it baked into it. I think they probably would as it's gonna be sort of like an iPad OS replacement and that would be the perfect drop in replacement for something like Spotlight. Now we have a final couple of things to look at at the bottom here. So we know this is our terminal, this is settings. Now this is their application store icon, but I do believe it's just gonna open up KDE's Plasma Discover store. It is indeed, of course, we're getting some sort of errors here and we're not gonna to attempt to install anything as we are also running in a live environment. So using the gesture, we've gone back home. Now last but not least, we have another icon here, which I do believe is a simplified view of sort of settings that should be easier for a touch screen. So let's open that up. And there we go. So it's in a sort of list kind of view and we have options for Bluetooth, energy information, accounts, cellular networks, software information, which will just be the sort of KDE system information that we saw earlier, which is KDE Plasma version 20.2. Now in appearance, we can change the size of the font as well as the theming. I'm not gonna risk it once more because I don't fancy another crash. And then we have time and date, virtual keyboard, NIC, pin, audio and language. So I think we're gonna wrap it up there, but that has been our first look at Jing OS. I have just gone to the lock screen so I can quickly show what the lock screen looks like. And I use the standard lock screen shortcut with Alt and L or Super and L. Now we're gonna pull this up and the default uh, pin for the sort of live environment at the moment is one, two, three, four, five and six. And there we go. That's been our first look at Jing OS. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and join the Discord. There's a link in the description. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.